Oh. Gibby, what do you got for us? You could let's just let's be clear about this. <laughs> you lost to two thousand dollars. Welcome back to Gus and Gorney. Long time coming, me kicking off the podcast, and all it's taken is for Angus Brayshaw to not rock up. Welcome, Max. He's had a if you is listening to the age or the Herald Sun, he's had a pretty busy week, uh, Angus. Um, also, another best on ground uh, performance. I think that's three or four in a row. Not getting Gus and Gorney votes. No. Um, which is interesting. Yeah. Against only the trademark two. values of the show. Correct. And obviously one of the trademarks is rocking up. Just to paint, paint the picture, we missed last week uh, because we had a really, really tight break and the time slot we normally do got shortened to like a 20-minute time slot. Um, so unfortunately we had to set miss. Up. We were ready to go. Yeah, we were ready to go. And I had to do some extra marking as, as, as well out on training because I hadn't been marking. Um, so we missed last week, and then we thought, all right, we'll do it before training on Monday, fresh. We got a one and a half hour break, and um, and Angus hasn't turned up, so we're going to call him, Gibby, uh, and he doesn't know we're going to call him, and I'm just going to ask him where he is. He ne- like we've already talked to him that he knows he's late, like he knows he's stuffed up, uh, but we're just going to see what his natural reaction is and see how far away he is from getting here, because he he needs to interview Sparks. So let's have let's have a little go here. Hey mate, what's happened? No, I was being dead serious. I just snoozed my alarm and slept in. It's it's ten o'clock. How do you sleep in till ten o'clock? No, no, no. I snoozed at nine and then just got up and got on with my morning and just completely forgot. So I'm I'm. Hoping that I can make it into the Spargo segment. What's happened is Gibby thinks that he is going to intro- like start the show. Yeah, I, I actually think you should. I think it would make for awesome um, podcast content. <laughs> yeah. So you're happy for us to get started? Yeah, hundred percent. And I'll, I've got, the f- I'm on, the, I'm on the road already. Yeah, would but to your base sides. What's that? That's an hour still. No, I'm on. Um, I'm just crossing. What's the best way to describe this? I'm about to get onto Punt Road from say uh, from the Nepean Highway, so I'm probably I'm on track to make it for the Spargo segment. Okay, that's good. Um, you're actually live on air. You got anything to say to apologise to the Gus and Gorney fans? Well, look, it's an interesting um, interesting pit situation you've got me in. I was actually going to use the next 15 minutes to think of something that would be uh, <laughs> adequate. Yep. I want you guys to know that I had an awesome sleep. Um, it was absolutely needed, and. I, uh, look, still, I've got an A for you. Okay. Uh, I think, put, put, put your hands up in the segment. I know we've got a video component. Put your hands up if you haven't just slept in once. And I suspect all hands are now up. So I'll take this one as my mulligan and I'll see you for the Spargo segment. Full of energy. <laughs> see you soon. See you, mate. I like that he was willing to allow me to start start the show. Yes, that was. He must I wasn't be feeling really that. bad. Yeah. Um, one thing with, uh, with with Angus is normally when he says something that he shouldn't say within the podcast or knows that he doesn't want to be involved in it, he just starts swearing. <laughs> and I thought that That's he was just going to start. I thought he was just going to start swearing <laughs> yeah. then, but he he, he 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 played along. Happy for it to not be cut. Um, where do we start? We can start with probably the biggest news in Gus and Gorney history. Yep. We went after a platinum sponsorship did. of Disco. We asked the fans to. Put in two dollars each, combined as one. We had seven hundred and twenty-six people put their hand up, spread across across two dollars to twenty-dollar donations. Wow, there must be yeah, must be a few people to put in a bit more than two. And we have raised it. We've done it. So we're a platinum Gus sponsor. Gus and Gorney is a platinum sponsor of Disco. Well Tender. done. Oh, Disco! It's a big moment. And what's going to happen at the end of the show? We'll do a little extra snippet, and we're going to randomly draw the winners. So, if you've put in twenty dollars, you've got ten entries. Two dollars, you got one entry, and we're going to give away all the prizes. We're going to have a uh, a sponsor at the BNF. It's going to be massive. Well, George and Jess have uh, their their player sponsors. They they are Disco's player sponsor, and yeah. I'd love nothing more than George to win. <laughs> The, the coffee. The coffee date. Yeah. I reckon that'd be really good, setting Disco up with a one-year-old. Um, I, I actually kind of want to rig it. I won't. I won't. Um, but, like, I'm jealous. I've got four sponsors, and together there's about ten of them. Like, there's about three combined in each different uh, sponsorship. Disco's got 700 and how many? 726. That's that's it's that's great. crazy. I, I kind of want him to meet every single yeah. one before the end of this year. A little um, community for him. I was just... I had to manually enter the the names. You weren't on there. 
No, Jess and Georgia. Yeah, but not, not yourself. Well, I was prepared to kick in if we missed the target. So I was like getting, like counting my thousands, almost ready to chuck in. Because <laughs> we were struggling there for a yeah, little bit early, early on. Days. And I was ready to just stick in big numbers. But the Jess and George donation is all the gourds needed. Was there a Brayshaw name there? I haven't found that one yet. Yeah, he must Steph have Steph was in. second. Yeah. He was second. I was in there. Speaking, actually, this is probably a great time to give Steph a mic. Yeah. Isn't it? Is. it? He can jump in if he likes. Do you have a mic, Steph? So we'll, he, he, we'll get to Steph in a minute because I've got a question about him. Sure. Um, I got Wild Sund. Massive. I got Wild Sund. And I'm hoping that he sent it to, to Gus. Obviously, I don't have the password to our Instagram. Yeah, Gus hides that. Out. Um, but I was having breakfast with Ed at Pillar of Salt in Richmond. And a guy came up and said, excuse me, Max, do you mind taking a photo of myself <laughs> and Wild Sund? Called him Wild Sund. And I'm like, this is, this is great. Yes, this is as wild as it gets. Or maybe not as wild as it gets because he's hanging out with footballers. Um, and I believe you got... I got Gibby in the flesh at Eastland. Uh, a bloke, Justin, actually posted me on his feed. I think it's the first one for that. So shout out to Justin. There's been a fair few yep. flooding in. I think we've got a few more vouchers to give away. So maybe end of the season we draw a couple. Um, there's going to be plenty of names in the running. Now, were you watching much footy over the weekend? Watch a bit of footy. It was a good one. Collingwood game, good finish. Collingwood and Richmond are doing wonders for everyone at the moment. They're literally playing the best games yep. to watch. Um, Ours was good to watch as well. Not the result, but... High your scoring. your modern day rival in your space works for Collingwood photography. Yeah, photography and TikTok and content mm-hmm. and works 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 for Collingwood. You both have sort of he actually, gingery type hair. He actually um, has left Collingwood, but he was okay. back taking photos yesterday. And he literally position. had the best spot at the MCG to take a photo. How lucky is that? Front row seats <laughs> to Jamie Elliott. He had to move his stuff so Jamie Elliott could have his shot. Yeah. I actually I don't sit on the boundary line very often, but. I did a couple of weeks ago and Ben Brown literally nearly stood on my laptop. It was the most awkward experience of my life. <laughs> so the Buddy uh, 1000, mm. the Michael Wilson made a decision to leave all these computers on the boundary line yeah. and run in. Yeah. That's a lot of trust to the crowd. One of the photographers had their lens broken. Someone oh, really? jumped the fence, landed on the lens, snapped like $20,000 lens. And then uh, couldn't take a photo of the magic moment that yeah. he was there for. So $20,000 lens. Yeah. That's how much. Ones. Yeah, they're pretty expensive. And would and would the company pay that, or would they ha- they'd have to invest in their own money to get the best stuff? Not too sure. I haven't. Do you have a camera, or is it Melbourne's? Ah, uh, we use Melbourne's. Got a personal one too, though. Steph. Good morning. That's his voice. <laughs> this is me. The man this behind the scenes. It is bizarre being on the podcast yep. after being behind it for so many years. Now um, you um yeah you ran half half a marathon. I did yesterday. It was not the best preparation, yeah. I must admit. I um, was obviously having a busy night yeah. uh, at our game on... When was it? When did we play? Saturday, Saturday night. night. Yes, and I was starving after the game. And there's, I guess there's nowhere that you can really go to have dinner except for Macca's. So oh, no. <laughs> I committed to the uh, the chicken bacon deluxe. <laughs> People uh, are fans of that one. And uh, got four hours sleep after working the game and, uh, yeah, ran into a half marathon, which is the most I've ever run. How'd that feel at kilometre 10? Uh, kilometre 10, I was okay, actually. Yeah. It was 15 because I've done the run for kids and yeah. that, that was my barrier and my body quite literally shut down. At 15? At 15. It knew that you've yeah. done 15 before and then said, no, nah, I'm done with this. Yeah, it must, have, it must be like a... My brain was just like, yep, this is as far as we go. The, the, the uh, chicken bacon deluxe. Yeah, chicken bacon deluxe. Well, I'm sure Sporting, yeah. Globe, Sporting Globe would have been open. Yeah, could have popped in. Could have popped oh, into geez. Sporting Globe Richmond. Didn't think of them. Yeah, well, next time. We're about to your base. There's a Sporting Globe out in Knox as well. Churney. Churney yeah, would be my maybe closest, the, I think. Is there a, no, is there a oh, Sporting Knox, Globe Churney? Knox yeah. or Churney, yeah. Yeah, right. Great setup. Yeah. Great setup. Yeah. On yeah, the back of a trip to Croatia too, not ideal prep. I do want to add... Every single week when we have a guest on, Steph shoves the mic really close to their face. He says, get nice and intimate. He's sitting about a metre away from it. Yeah. I'm taking his own I advice. I have a loud, I'm Italian background, I have a loud voice. So, yeah, so you reckon I'm everyone cautious. can hear you? Yeah, I'm cautious of uh, <laughs> being too loud in this room. Um, and to all guests that we have on, do you have any small business uh, that you would like to sort of get involved in? Oh, Younger brother does a party and uh, photography DJ business, Tongue yep. and Groove Entertainment. Tongue and Groove. Tongue and Groove Entertainment. Uh, for all your party needs. So um, feel free to hit them up. I sometimes help them out, yep. um, taking photos on the weekend. So Do you have a Weebly? Don't have a Weebly. <laughs> Don't no. have a Weebly. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, could we potentially get that involved in our wedding business? Yes, yeah, we can, we can have can contacts. De- he can DJ the wedding? Yeah, absolutely. There's yep. been a request, hasn't there? 
Well, um, Sparks, I think we're, we're going to see if Sparks wants to DJ. Oh, yeah, DJ Sparks. The weddings once we get him in uh, in a minute. But, yeah, there has been one request. That's big. That's pretty much everything. What was your role again? Uh, photographer. And you were videographer? Yeah. Okay. Claire's got flowers. Yep. I'm happy to... Happy to do some like roaming interviews as well if needed. Yeah, what does our boss bring? Uh, He's not invited. <laughs> 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 He's in the room. He's in, we'll give you a mic. Actually, no, we won't. Um, VFL went yes. uh, went undefeated again. Again, uh, fifteen. Yeah, huge. But more importantly, the return of Maxi Maxi Disco That's Turner um, and Blake Howes. Yeah, he's back, which could come in handy because we might have lost a wingman. We don't know. JJ. Yeah. yeah so knee soreness. Knee no, soreness. No update yet. No update. Could be a week, could be two weeks, could be you, plain. You you reckon you're getting housed straight back in? Well, How many very handy for Casey. Played, if Sauce Baker does come in, then Housey can hold up a wing at yeah. Casey as well. Um, very, like, who knows? JJ could be playing. Yeah. He literally played three quarters yeah, played after the, the incident. The but there's so many elements. You could bring Angus back to the wingers club. Yeah. But he's an all, is he an all Australian halfback? Well, it's, he probably is at this stage. Yeah. I'll leave Saad it to the guys. Well, maybe. Yeah, Saad, Saad's going well. I think both Carlton halfbacks are in there, Do- yeah. Doherty as well. Um, both Melbourne halfbacks. Yeah. That's Rick Lever. <laughs> Does he play halfback? I've never seen a player get dropped slash rested to be an assistant coach. Rick Lever. Yeah. Yeah. He's claiming that his shoulder was sore and couldn't have played, but I said, mate, they knew that Chappie was going to be out and they needed you to be backline coach and that trumps actually playing. So does is it good or bad for Rick Lever's resume that we've conceded 100 points for the first time in three years yeah. when he's not playing but was coaching? He said that he's blaming it on Richo. And Richo's been out of the coaching game for a little bit, so there might be a bit in that. Uh, but yeah, we, 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 we let a score... And we knew it at halftime. We knew that we got ourselves involved in a shootout, which is not the way we want to play footy at all. Um, and we tried to stop it right there and then. And to be to be fair, the third quarter was three goals each and they dominated the play. So we felt like we did do sort of the right way about stopping a shootout. But then the fourth quarter was back to back to the same odd footy it was in the first half. So it wasn't the way we like to play. Um, and, and I don't think... Well, technically, is Chappie out for this week as well? I think he might be. Yes, we're hearing. So... Jake if Lever, Lever plays. Well, maybe if he's fit to play, do you pick him as your coach? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so after last week. <laughs> Should um, we give votes on that game? Most right? Yes. And the week before? Yes. Uh, the week before was... Cozzy. Cozzy. Kick six. Yeah, I think Big he, community impact. I'm just trying to find the votes. There we go. That's Cozzy's first vote. Yep. Um, and I will give it to... Cozzy as well. So he's got two votes from that <laughs> game. Cut some dead air there. <laughs> and then from the weekend, I know who your vote is, so Weeds. Weedman, no. <laughs> he's I on actually three. liked his game. Um, but I wanted to give a left field one, which I don't know. I haven't read the, the rules in this, but I wanted to give it to Cade Chandler, okay. who actually didn't play, um, connected to the podcast via the, the news hound. Yep. But obviously he's dominating VFL level, kicked another four. But he was there for the start of the game. He was literally cheering the boys on as they walked up the race. Massive effort. And he's the first one down to the rooms. Just brings good energy. Yeah, he's um, our, usually he's, our, he's my rival, but I thought I'd give him a shout out. He's our number one supporter. He is. It's he, great um, to see. He deserves a game of football. Yep. It's a very tough spot at the moment, the half forward spot. Um, if he played in any other position, I dare say he would have been given a run at some point. So um, obviously you've seen Bedford 10 times as sub. He's obviously a bit uh, stiff as well, but the Neil Bull and Spargo, Cozzy Pickett combination is a combination that's worked for us for years. And while we're up and down in form this year, those three are still doing their thing. So it's a tough spot. Melky's come in uh, as a hybrid, uh, sort of tall, sort of small, and sort of looks like he's fitted in quite well. So um, I hope I, I hope the, the, the new town gets a break in soon. I'm going a little bit left field as well, but not as left field. He's come back from COVID. He had a long time away from the football club in Harry Petty. Um, he kept he kept Josh Bruce to a pretty quiet game um, and did his thing when he was able to play on Jamara and Norton at different times as well. I thought Petty was really good. So I'm going Petty. Uh, that gets him to two. Um, I already gave Wiedemann one for you, so he's equal <laughs> three with, with, with Jack Viney. So they're our two leaders. Surprisingly, Angus, who has been best on ground every week, and Clayton, the Brownlow medal chance, aren't winning. In fact, Clayton hasn't got a vote. 
So it shows that, that maybe forty touches a few times. Maybe we have some problems with our voting system. Um, yeah, or there's some flaws. That's okay. Yep. Any that's any news? Any news? Mm, I wanted to talk about goal of the year because yep. we were pretty strong on advocating for Ed Langdon to win it. Yep. Um, might have a few issues at the moment. Last week, your mate Draper kicked a pretty pretty good one. And but so I think it's good, but. Is the fact he's 200 centimetres, is that the why he's winning? Probably. Yeah. But I don't think he's winning because Dacos yesterday. Do you reckon the Dacos one was better than I the Drapers? Think, and I think he'll get votes. Collingwood will. Because it's a voted award. Well, we want. So Ed Langdon. So we're going to have to push hard for Langdon. And and not for the f- the reason for goal of the year. Like, that's a great prize. I'm not sure what the prize is a TV, a sound system. I don't know what it is. But more for the prize of Ed having to come to the Brown line. <laughs> so if we can. And I think top. Top, top three, three had I to come. So. Yeah, Cozzy was there last year. Yeah, a bit different last year with the. Um, I think uh, you had to I be mean, in the room I don't want to go into conspiracies, year, yeah. but everyone who was in the room won an award. So, um, <laughs> which is great for me because I don't think George, George Artis was in the room. So um, that, that, <laughs> that, that, that could have been why. Uh, but yeah, Ed does not want to come to the Brown though. Doesn't want to borrow it. He could be in, in there in terms of our top five invited mm. for one. Um, but I really want him there. So I'm, we at least have to go. Draper, Dacos, Langdon, top three. Yeah, top and three. The but there's been matter. some better goals as well. There's been some good ones. <laughs> and there's been some good marks. Toby Green. Yeah. Um, weekend. Added apparently George Yardis had another one. Yep. And Saad. Saad. Someone jumped on my back. Apparently wasn't that good though. Was it Karmas? Uh, yeah, Karmas jumped on my back. Um, yeah, but wasn't that good. I want to talk about TikTok. Yes. Growing platform. Growing platform. So Facebook is... If you go on Facebook now, every time I go on, my mum and dad are the first things in my post. They've posted a photo of their trip or it's something. Like, They've commented on something. Yeah. On your birthday, you get six posts from your friends, parents, and yep. your old career coach. Facebook's a real boomer platform, I would like to say. Maybe Gen Y as well. Then Instagram seems to be a little bit more... How, how, how old are you? 25. Yeah, you're just at the bottom. Just at the bottom of Instagram. <laughs> so we've got a storm in. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to continue on this bit. Yeah. Um, black eye. Yeah, I've got a black eye. Uh, Instagram seems to be 25 and over. Quite yep. popular there, but it is the Facebook to the group younger than us. Like yep. we're boomers. TikTok is all the rage. I was thinking, do we get a Gus and Gorney TikTok? Because Gibbo, Gus, has just produced a TikTok that went 360,000 people viral. Yeah. And a few, like a lot of people commenting. So it was literally about the fact that now in Woolworths, this is in Mornington, instead of them printing out the price tags and changing every time something's on special, they're electronic and they just update them, which I thought was fascinating. But I've posted some, personally, what I think are great TikToks that have had 200 views. Yeah. This was okay and it's gone yeah, pretty vile. Apparently it struck a nerve with a few people that work at Woolworths, threatened by their job. Yep. Um, yeah, so... Uh, we'll put that on the table with, with, with Sparks and Gus about maybe creating yeah. some TikTok. Christian Petrarca's on it. He's going well. How about we come back after this? Gibby, thanks for filling in. No, no worries. Thanks for the opportunity, Gus. And um, we'll be back. <laughs> now, Gus, we all know the team at Zurich Insurance are proud sponsors of the Gus and Gorney podcast. Yes, absolutely. Huge supporters of the pod. I think they were our first sponsor and certainly our first platinum partner, which they is a platinum. huge result. Yes, and they've also been on board as a co-principal partner of the club since 2018 and have been protecting Australia for over 100 years. That's right. They provide insurance for individuals and families, plus businesses large and small. Now, Gussie, we know you're a big fan of protection, rocking your helmet at every chance you get, so this is very on brand for you. You're absolutely right. To see how Zurich can support you, head to zurich.com.au or contact your financial advisor or broker. Welcome back to Gus and Gorney. Uh, I'm I surprised was, you still call it that. Yeah, I thought it was a good first segment. Uh, we had Stefan debut. Uh, me and Gibby really crunched out some interesting topics in football. Sure. Let's get to that after the sponsors because we can't forget them. Well, obviously, we've just heard uh, Zurich. from Zurich. Um, we love we love Zurich uh, and then we just talk about our next platinum sponsor uh, speaking of platinum I've actually got something to fill you in later mm. on but uh, Sporting Globe uh, there's great spots in Morty Alec, Knox Richmond Geelong I've had a lot of pushback um, apparently you went too hard at Morty Alec. have I? maybe but is it Bayside? I it's think that not. was it's City of Frankston isn't it? anyway it's close Continue. too anyway some more. Uh, and then yeah every, every, everyone else uh, no order here uh, but Lay Day Green Zone Termites, East End Wine Bar, Oliver Lock, Squash, Fat Nut Customs, Bigger Fasteners, Cabin, Little Bridge Cafe, Bundai Sticks, Aubrey Wholesale Chickens, 
Adzi Adventures, Guzman and Gomez, F45 Frankston, and just recently, Tongue and Groove Entertainment. There you go. Still haven't heard back from Guzman and Gomez, mind you, but um, everyone else there, <laughs> you're just and Gorni at checkout. You get some good stuff. We've actually got, if you've looked at the podcast, um, you'll know our guest. He's actually the man behind the scenes that does it all for us. So, Charlie Sparko, welcome to the crew. Thanks for that's, um, that's an amazing list of sponsors. How do you manage it all? Um, yeah, I don't know. I've been putting in a bare mountain of work over the last 18 months. I've um, just been sort of working on building relationships with, with many people and um, yeah, getting some good sponsorship deals done. So. You, got some, you got something for us today, obviously. Uh, um, yep. That's your I've job. Been, uh, so. Yeah, it is my job, so no excuses for not having anything, but I do. I have something. Um, I have one thing that I can't sort of mention the fine details yet, but I'm doing some work into um, a certain shock shock absorber provider oh. that's going to give us a really good deal on that. So it's um it's not finalised <laughs> like for, for cars? Like, is that like a car? Uh, all sorts of things. So if sure. anyone's interested in that, just... So sorry, shock it. absorbers, correct me if I'm wrong, they're those um, big springs. Yeah. Is, that the, is that the business name, shock absorber? Nah, yeah. it's a certain shock absorber provider. Yeah. yeah. Um, so just stay tuned for oh, that. Wow, that's but, exciting. I yeah. actually didn't know about that that's one. In the, that's in the works. Yeah. Um, hopefully in the next couple of weeks we'll have that finalised. Yeah, nice one. Um, but... Uh, one that I have finalised um, is the Social Golf Club. So oh. I would say um, definitively now I have the golf bug. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, um, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm doing my best. Um, currently in the process of getting my handicap. So for anyone who is in the pro- who wants to get their handicap, um, we have a deal now at the Social Golf Club, I believe. Um, Sticks Brayshaw. Yeah, it turns out that's actually Sticks Brayshaw's social. He's, he's run, he runs what is the, the social, social golf, golf club. Well, I'm about, about to find out. Yeah. So the social golf club, um, obviously you have to join a, a golf club to get a handicap. So the social golf club is an online way um, to get your handicap without sort of um, being part of a, you know, a golf yeah. club where you have to um, get on a membership wait list, um, spend a fair bit of money to get a membership. So social golf club, um, get your handicap. And the deal is prepay for five years and get 5% off the 60. Oh, that's that actually sounds membership. like a proper deal. I actually that's think that's amazing. a pretty good deal. I think that <laughs> might be the best, one of the best deals I've ever done. Yep. Sticky brace. Um, but really Sticky good. Brace. I got my, uh, my social golf club card um, in the mail the other day. Um, a few two for ones at some nice courses like Portsy, oh, nice. uh, Mornington Club Mandalay. So um, plenty of, plenty of deals with good golf courses that you can be able to get some, some good rounds in some good value. That's a half proper deal. That's, that's what we really wanted. Got. That's yeah. what we really wanted. Yeah. That beats a lot of yeah. <laughs> your, your past work. Yeah, no, I'm pretty proud. Of this one. We had a, you had a yeah. massive laugh at Albury Wholesale Chickens. Yeah, you know. Yeah, well, I know that's that's Daniel Turner's mum works yeah, there. Maxie Turner. Yeah, yeah I've, I've I've eaten a lot of chicken from there. Is yeah, there something you time. is there something you think you can get from them? Uh, yeah, I can I can contact Tracy Turner and yeah. see what see what happens. But yeah, I think we're a thousand chooks, then get ten percent off the thousand. That's all we are. I reckon I'd be close to a thousand chooks yeah. eaten. I, I did eat a lot of yeah, chicken. Yeah, if you can just from there growing up in Albury. Yeah, yeah, well, anyway, that's well done. Uh, on on Maxie Turner, you missed the first segment. How's the sponsorship going? We made it. We're there? We made That's it. That's incredible. 726 sponsors. Okay, so that, that, I was about to say, that was my next question. So 720, what was it, 5,500? Yeah. So that's about an average of five bucks. A couple of people chucked in a few extra dollars. Good on them. Jess and George. There you go. So I'm trying to rig it so George has the coffee with Disco. I reckon that'd be hilarious. Danielle refused to invest, <laughs> so that, that made me upset. Really? Um, did yeah. you invest? Yeah, of course I did. Okay. Um, um, Gibby just hasn't found your name yet. That's all right. How about uh, the one that, the question I wanted to know is, is there going to be a proportionate weighting of if I, for example, um, Joe Bloggs who invested fifty bucks, no. you've actually got it. I'm entering manually. Oh wow, that's a that's a terrible task. A terrible task. But you're the jobs boy. What, what job I call him? <laughs> the helper. helper. <laughs> jobs boy sounds better. Um, oh, that's awesome. Well done, Gus and Gorney family. Uh, Spargs, we we're just talking about. Uh, another segment that we're trying to push is get Ed Duncan to the Brownlow with his goal of the year nomination. <laughs> Um, we'd love him to make top three. Have to have to, have to go to the Brownlow. We have a proud history of yeah, getting behind courses right and pushing. Oh, it. We're oh, wondering oh, if right. you want to. If you, you can ask us now, we can get your mark of the year pushed. If you if you want to come to the Brownlow. Nah, I'm I'm, I'm all good. You don't I want don't to. Think I want to go to the Brownlow. Tell you why he's he's stepping back from that one. It's because he's also part of the wingers club now. So yeah, yeah. He wants to just give the president. You've played more wing yeah. than, than want, the founder. I have, if I have this year. I don't want to take the shine away from Ed. Like, this is his moment. Let's get him to the brown line. Okay, okay. So you're happy to, yeah. even though you're easily top three marks this year. Uh, easily? Yeah, I think, oh, I think you got one. beaten by three marks this week, let alone yeah, this year. I, but I don't think I've... You were looking good away, until... Yeah. yeah. Look, who knows? If you guys did try with you know, with the, the weighting that Gus and Gorney podcast has, I could. we got a fair reach. But I don't, I don't want to, so I'm okay. just putting that out there. Uh, Lingers, Lingers, we literally got Georgiatis robbed of a TV last year. Georgie Artis and Wayman had a TV locked in and we just campaigned against him and it managed to work. 
Um, another thing we just wanted to uh, check, Charles, and I'm not sure if Angus is blossom in friendship you two have, but I'm not sure if you've talked about this in particular, is we have a wedding business while we're just trying to start a wedding business. Got no idea about it. Um, <laughs> so we thought Gus and Gordy could provide some of their talent to help people get married. Uh, we got a photographer. We got the whole crew. The jobs boy will take photos. Videographer with Stefan. Yeah, um, vi- as you can see, there's cameras everywhere. His brother, Tongue and Groove Entertainment, will help us with. Yeah. And then you have two MCs. We're wondering if you could come on board as the DJ. Uh, yeah, sure. I, I, I could do that. Weddings aren't really my thing, but yeah. uh, what is sure your thing? I can adapt. Um, <laughs> oh, I don't. I won't go into what my thing is, but no. Can, but, can we have um, a genre? Like, what do you? What do you? What's the name of the person who um, actually does the ceremony? Uh, the celebrant. The celebrant. I should get my celebrant's license. Yeah, but you don't have. You've got your DJ license. Yeah. You don't have your celebrant license. What, what if I did both? Well, I mean, that would be impressive. I've we, never. I've never had a celebrant DJ. So that neither could be have I. That could be our point of differentiation. <laughs> what? Um, where would I go to find your music though? Uh, if I typed in a key Spotify genre, what am I typing in? Uh, probably nineties deep house. Nineties deep you. house. Yeah, that's probably my my style. Yeah. I bet there's some. People out there thinking about getting a wedding who are in the market for a right. pair of MCs, videographer and if, photographer who also yeah, like Deep if House. They're, if yeah. they're partial to that, then yeah. that'll work. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and can we ask like, what time slot we could find you yeah. in? What time? Uh, probably the 1 to 3 a.m. You're a 1 to yeah. 3 setup. Yeah, that's my... So pre-12 is, is, not, prime time? is not 90s Deep House? What, one, uh, it is, but yeah, 1 to 3 is the, is the peak slot. Yeah, right, like is that that's where I do my best. Is that work. prime time in the on the scene, or is uh, that yeah? Is yeah, that yeah, the dregs? Like I'm just trying to get a vibe of how good nah, you are. The, the 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 two slots you probably don't want are the basement one, which is beyond that. Yeah, uh, I, I wouldn't want to stay out that late. And yep. then uh, before that is just the warm ups for people trying to get their foot in the door. So. Yeah, 11 till 3 is sort of where you want to... So you've actually made it. It sounds like he's made it. I was an aspiring DJ when I was young at a DJ set. I have heard that. I've had, I had two gigs. Oh, yeah? Yeah, one was... What was your DJ name? Sorry, what's your DJ name, by the way? Uh, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mine was Max. Max Gorn. Yeah. Which was, is, it works because that's his name. Mine was Max Gorn, number 11, Melbourne Football Club. I assume that... Yeah, uh, no, I had room, 3 to 5. You just spoke about how bad it is to have the post-3 slot, yeah. and I had that, 3 yeah, to 5. The graveyard graveyard the graveyard but the other one's worse. I DJed New Year's Eve at Prince Nightclub in oh. Fitzroy, and I was in the men's toilets. That can't be that can't, a legitimate gig. They needed DJs in all five, six different rooms, oh. and I got given. But I had a good time slot, like 11 to 1 or something. I was yeah, there. Right. I was in the men's toilets for New Year's. It was there it was a, it? What a countdown. <laughs> I told my friends that I had tickets to Prince, come watch me. Um, oh. We'll do it at Prince. And they had to hang out at the men's toilets <laughs> for three hours. That's devastating. Is there scope to potentially... So what's your, So if I, want, if I I assume there's a way to, you can get booked. Is there a website or... Do um, you just, it's, yeah, it's, it's, all we take is a DM. Have you got an uh, hourly rate? I'm, I don't really want to... I'm not really... Have you got a rate? At the moment because my, my folks... Folks, at the moment, it's on footy, so... Have you got an hourly rate? Uh, I, don't, I don't have an hourly rate. Um, uh, it's could the, it's I get, potentially, if I prepaid for 20 DJ hours, could I get 10% off my 21st DJ hour? Uh, Is that how you do it in hours? I was actually thinking about potentially coming up with a deal in this sort of um, space. It'd be so easy to do. you just be me, negotiating with co- yourself. Give, yeah, give me a couple <laughs> weeks to negotiate with myself. Yeah, yeah sure. Um, get the shocks. <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm really excited about that shocks opportunity. Yeah, no, that, well, that's first and foremost. Sure, it has to be. The forefront of my mind. But put, put Paul on the back there, don't I've yeah, already so. written down DJ Paul on the sponsors list. Yeah. which is, And I don't think we have an entertainment sponsor. So no, while we we've just, And we've been given two today, which is amazing. Is your... Um, what's it called again? Tongue sorry? and Groove Entertainment. Does Tongue and Groove provide a DJ or... Yeah, oh, okay. okay. So we could have some boring factions there. That's but right. what was I saying? You get the deal done. You get the yeah, deal I'll, I'll, I'll you said yeah, they myself. do before. Um, are you, you aware of Tongue and Groove Entertainment? Uh, yeah, I've, I've been to a few, I think, at 18th so when I was in year 12 or something. Tongue and Groove did all the photos. Yeah, uh, right. So the they're stuff. our sub. They've got the, like, uh, it's a prominent stamp on the photo yeah, okay. with the, you know those ones from all yeah, the 18th yeah, yeah, with yeah, yeah. the typical filter that. Yeah. Be careful what you say here, they're a sponsor. Yeah. No, but you know what I mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. iconic. Like you know what it looks like. So yeah. there, it sounds like 18th. That's a, the younger market, and you're in the clubs yeah. Yeah. from one to three. So you might be our. You're a 23 year old. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah. am now. No, I'm 22. Yeah, yeah. 23 in November. Yeah. Um, so I've got. You know, I've got another one. Yep. Uh, we're all part of Meat Club. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's been a while. <laughs> Tom has been our spiritual leader for a long time. Big time. Uh, spiritual and practical leader. But I feel like he's he's. Aging a bit within our, we, we need a younger leader, a younger demographic. Um, and I feel like 
pole over over yeah, over, over I here. I do love meat. Yeah, and I and I kind of I want without. I should have given you some prep, but have you got a best steak in Melbourne? Uh, I like charcoal grill on the hill. Thank you. Yeah, that to be fair, that's it's one of my good. favorites. Um, as well. Tom McDonald says grill americano is the best though. Okay, where's and that? I, I mean to get there. It's in the city. It's it's quite new. Um, I think it's only been in Melbourne for under yeah. twelve months. Do I like I, I like Angus and Bon, partly because they're named after Angus Young. And Bon Scott, my Akadaka. So great. there's that. They, yep. um, it's a cool little joint that they've sort of, it's like um, an old warehouse that they used to perform in ACDC in the 70s. That's now been done up. It's on a warehouse. It's like this cool, uh, it's got a good, I don't know. They play cool music, make cocktails like steak. Thunderstruck and other stuff. Yeah, great, awesome steak. Yeah. So get yeah, there. Sounds yeah. pretty good. I'd like to add Vlado's just because of. Sure. Have I'd you been there? Feel free is to. That, is that still operating? Yeah, I went there the other day. Oh, really? I've yeah. been meaning to go there for a while, but I drove past and it looked like it was shut down. It's looked like it's shut the whole time. All right. Yeah. I need to go there because I've heard nothing but good things. Yeah. It's a big, it's a grill on the hill type setup. Yeah, I thought so. Pretty. Charcoal grill on the hill. Yeah. Bricks and mortar. Have you been to Railway? I in have. Port Melbourne. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, I have. Went yeah. there with uh, Mitch Hannon once. Yeah. The Cassowary. Yeah, the Cassowary. Friend of the podcast? Did he play on you on the weekend? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, had some... Did you tell him to fire up? Chats. I did. I told him to awesome. fire up multiple times. Yeah. Apparently he's not called the Cass. Of course not. Do you he's remember when Hanno they, or something. They, um, do you remember... <laughs> people would remember, I think because there was no volume or no crowds at this game, um, when we played them, year. and Cassowary had a set shot, and we were all just calling him the Cassowary, and I was standing on the mark... <laughs> I must admit, after the game, I was a little bit anxious to go back and watch the replay just in case like everyone could hear how yell- loud I was yelling at him. Like yeah. I was <laughs> t- screaming at him, telling him to fire up. Yeah, and there was 20 blokes, 20 doggies blokes. So he kicks the goal and 20 of them... Went to Harmsy. No, come, no, come no, to bash me up. <laughs> and I just walk off. I'm getting a few pushes and shoves. I'm like, oh, whatever, guys, it's all good. Harmsy, on the other hand, sees red and just <laughs> flies in there. We were the peanut gallery that day. Though. Oh, and he... <laughs> It was so bad. I actually and remember gets the we had all 20 of us saying Cass when he was on the set yeah, shot, yeah. But then and so was Libba. Libba joined in with us. And, and he was the one that was going to Hamzy. Yeah. <laughs> well, Cass kicked it. it Hamzy just got flawed. Clutch. Yeah, he kicked it. Then Hamzy just got beaten up pretty much for my... I feel like I was probably pushing it the hardest. Anyway, um, Cass wearing. <laughs> now, I just want to talk about something uh, quite, quite related. You sure. two are blossoming. What people don't see, and there's actually a few layers to this, is that the first... Oh, I think we've already blossomed. Yeah, so I've known him well, since true. he was literally there is he was born. Fights. There's fights. There's now. a few fights. <laughs> I, I remember Sparks as an infant, a little tiny fetus. And, and, how, and how's this? Um, were you there on the? Were you there at the hospital? No, no, no. Because he, his parents and my parents were very, very close friends. They played. Um, Paul, the real Paul and Sticks played at North together. Um, Kate and Deborah, tight as, <laughs> and I just I've known Sparks. Andrew, my younger brother. Also born in November. Sparks yep. was born in November, so we've just always had that fam- f- family connection. Family Sorry, there's connection. no. Oh, okay, okay. And um, no, there's no physical. There's no. <laughs> not actually. I'm not just family. friends with someone because they're born in December. No, but if you had a, if you, <laughs> if you had a kid, if George was born <laughs> with who's someone you actually like, if you and I had a kid, yeah, not Rick. I was going to say Rick, but that's doesn't really work. If you and I had kids <laughs> at the same time, yeah, they're probably friends growing up. Correct. And and you know we live around the corner from each if other. If they're family friends already in the first place, exactly. Yes. They both lived in Bayside growing up. Yeah, lived in Rock. Bayside, Black Rock. Yeah. So years. we've had this awesome, you know, family friendship the whole yep. journey along. We get drafted together. Numbers, the story yeah, continues. Numbers next chances. to each other. Yeah, nine and ten. The chances are really small. And then I don't, I don't want to bring it up here, but Spargs is in the process of betraying me constantly. So <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want this to, to come up today. I thought it might have. No, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go into it. But Please we are. Not. You're right, Max. To the uh, to the untrained eye, we are absolutely blossoming. Well, the reason why you're late to a lot of podcasts is you're hanging out with Paul. Yeah, we um, we're doink buddies. Yeah, we are. We yeah. drink a lot. Of yeah, yeah. So yeah so that's that's, um, that's Coke Zero for the, un- need to try the untrained. Need Work out something there. Yeah, geez. Well, we can't actually. We've already got a beverage sponsor. Apparently, okay. I, 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 I obviously can't. Aren't Powerade, Powerade, are Coca Cola, aren't they? Doink is okay. Well, then why why is this being an obstacle? I, every day yeah. I come in, I come in with my. So I, Sparks and I are doink buddies. After main training, we go and get um, a bottle of Coke Zero each. It's two for six fifty at the local. And we hunt deals. We, we, we Where's the name doink come from? It's a long... Honestly, I can't quite I remember. couldn't tell you where it came from. <laughs> it's just... It is. <laughs> You're not working with Traco at the moment. No. He manages... Like, I, he's got a deal with Doe. Yeah. yeah. Nah. I, he looked, he looked hot. I, I he looked hot last night. I should become his personal CFO. <laughs> get a percentage. No, you shouldn't. Get a percentage. You're already occupied. You're, the yeah, position's no, I'm filled. Already, I'm already busy enough. Did yeah. you see his Kennedy watch yeah. photo? 
I think that um, oh, yeah, he looked good. He looked sorry. good. He looked, he looked hot. Actually, he looked, want to buy he looked really good. Anyone else want to buy? He actually a watch was wearing tight clothes for once, which he's usually you know wears the oversized stuff. But I didn't yeah. mind it. Yeah. I, I thought he looked nice. You gonna buy a watch? I almost did. Yeah, I almost did. I haven't bought YoPro. He hasn't made me buy YoPro. Yet. Have they got? And this I is the this would be the deal breaker for me. Do I get if I use Track at checkout? Do I get <laughs> something off the watch or no? Nah. Okay, well then I'm not buying it. That's yeah. a, that's why you're the man, yeah. Sparks. That's why you're the best in the business because you, you just do the hard work that other people aren't. Track's not willing to do that work. Um, I'll get in touch with him. Before we go, is it, do you want to talk about Charles's season so far? Yeah. Well, I mean, as we've alluded to, you've sort of transitioned out of your probably you know the role you've been playing for the last couple of years at small forward into the wingers department, the wingers club, men's department, the wingers club. Sorry, and. Um, that's different. So how are you finding that? Yeah, it's good. I actually like sort of switching it up. Um, you sort of, you're definitely in the game a lot more on the wing. Like you're around the action a lot more. It's um, it's definitely a harder position. I have a lot of empathy for, for wingers now um, for a couple of different reasons. You have to work incredibly hard. I didn't mm. realise. It's, it's certainly not my type of fitness. I'm more of a sprint and then stand still for <coughs> a minute and then sprint again. But the wing, you're, you're constantly on the move. Um, I couldn't imagine trying to chase Ed Langdon the whole game. That would be a nightmare. Yep. Um, and sort of, yeah, you've got to have a lot of discipline with it, as you know. So um, I'm enjoying the challenge and yeah. I, I like playing there. I like being part of the wingers club as well. I was just about it's to ask, group. how hard in my absence has Lingers been driving that? Is he the leader or is it or is JJ? Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's certainly not as strong. <laughs> As when you were there. <laughs> Has um, he mentioned it? gets it mentioned every now and then. It does? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Maybe that's once a week. Okay, that's better than I expected. I seriously, I, I, I thought that Lingus might just drop it like a hot potato, but he's, has he mentioned it? Has it come out of his mouth? <laughs> to be honest, I can't remember the last oh, time. That's not great. Well, the spiritual leader's source. Of course it is. How's he going? You have much to do with him? Or you I just don't sort do much of in wing the stuff at training, so yeah. yeah, I haven't. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Okay. You got yeah, much else? The, I'm, Sparks guessing, and I, I'm guessing you've done no prep. My prep was last night with Stixie. I was actually uh, arbitrating the deal between Stixie yeah, and Sparks. Gus was the middleman. How did your golf middleman. tournament go against the McVees? Uh, te- we played terrible, Judd and I. Although I'm buying Judd's oh, so you So it was the young boys via the old boys. Yeah. And um, I'm buying... young cars. Yeah, I'm buying Judd's stocks. He can hit the ball a mile. He just needs to refine his, his game a bit, which... Is um, old man a handy golfer? His old man's pretty handy. Stixie... Pulled on out of his ass as well and had probably the best round I've ever seen him play. What yep. is your handicap, by the way? What do you I, reckon I'm it will in, be? I'm in the process of getting it. Oh, it will be mid 20s, probably. We okay. should have, um, I was just thinking off the top of my head, uh, we should have a Gus and Gorney golf day and you'd yeah. be invited because you're, yeah, um, I can sort out you're the CFO. For it and yeah. like that. You'd, be in the, you'd be in the group with myself, Sauce, and Disco Turner, like, a, like the great, yeah. we're the 20s group. Yeah, that's right. I'd, I'd be happy to be there. And the a sponsorship. Group. That would yeah. be, that'd count as a sponsorship thing for yeah. you as well. Although Sauce plays off 10, he'll probably play to our handicap that Sauce day. is off 10. No, he's yeah. not. He's he's something he cool. can't be. He's something like. That's all I've got for you though, Sparks. You've um, certainly added, it's a, va- it's a net add to this podcast today. You've got some good sponsorships. I want and, and to hear about the shocks. And there's, and there's, there's I know there's more, more in the works. And more. Paul, what, what, what's your DJ name? So Paul, and I know you do it with your brother. Ed. P-O-R-L, Paul. That's that's the name of your... Yeah. So we And so there's the shocks, shocks are us, and Paul feels yep. in the works. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be doing some negotiating with myself. Yeah, I look and forward. There's, <laughs> and there's no gigs between now and finals. Sorry, huge break. Don't anyway. book if you want a gig in the next yeah. eight weeks, yeah, uh, because you won't be nine weeks, ten weeks. Yeah. That will, that won't work. Uh, for off you. season's coming potentially one two or three. I'm what, was, I'm, yeah. what was the last venue you played at? The Gasometer. It's in our county. <laughs> yeah, so you're it's north north city open, north of the open air. Yeah, Have you been there? Yeah, north of the. You've city. been to the Gasometer. I've been everywhere, mate. Oh my god, it's good. It's a good place. So you're north of the city type person. Uh, I like the music scene. Yeah. So you're at the Gasometer at three a.m. one day. No, 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 no. I'm, I. He's having soda waters. He's just playing for the love of it, mate. Yeah, no, I. For the love of the music. Whilst, whilst one to three a.m. probably is the peak time. I, what I should have mentioned before is I'm more, I enjoy more of the day party sort of stuff. Uh, oh, yes. Yes. so you'd that be perfect for weddings. Deep this House Nineties is is, is is day like yes. sun. Go yeah. to Bali. I was yeah, say, sounds sounds okay. Bali. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, thanks for coming on, mate.